Thanks for pressing play everyone. I'm Jesse. You're watching JLS Comics. Today we're talking about Thanos. If you didn't know that there were two people who've actually played Thanos in the live action MCU or that Thanos once merged with Darkseid. Might want to check out this video. The Mad Titan, Lord of Ash, Thanos the Destroyer, Big Purple. I'm talking, of course, about Thanos, the big purple figure you've no doubt seen in the back of the Marvel Cinematic Films in the end credit scenes. Perhaps you've read his stories. Perhaps you've heard the news about Jim Starlin and his falling out with Marvel Publishing. But maybe you didn't know some of the facts that I'm going to tell you today. We're going to look at his publishing history, his actual biographical history, and then maybe look at some uh, important issues that you might want to read if, if you're interested in reading any of his backstory. Thanos first appeared all the way back in 1973 in the pages of Iron Man 55. It was drawn by Jim Starlin, who drew his inspiration from a couple of the Jack Kirby DC characters. One was Metron and the other was Darkseid. Jim Starlin had a character with a chair, purple, smaller, approached the editor at the time named Roy Thomas and said, hey, here's, here's my, one of my new characters. What do you think? And uh, Roy Thomas instantly recognized it as one of Jack Kirby's and said, hey, I like it, but if you're going to steal one of Kirby's guys, make it one of the really good ones. So beef him up a little bit, make him a little bit more like Darkseid. And hence, we got the figure in the form that we know today as Darkseid. And now he weighs in at an imposing six foot, seven inches, and just under a thousand pounds is what he weighs. So that's his story uh, back to 1973 uh, as his creation. But the actual biographical story of Thanos is pretty interesting. It goes back way, way further than that. Millions of years, in fact. It goes back to uh, when a race of celestials, massive, multi-thousand foot tall, armored cosmic beings came down to Earth to perform some experiments and essentially create a race of subjects for themselves. They gave them the ability to manipulate energy. They messed around with their genetic code. Some of the code that they instilled in the humans at the time became what we know now as mutants in the Marvel Universe. But what they did was create a race of Eternals that grew out of this. The genetic code there allowed them to manipulate energy, as I said, and that gave us Mentor, who was Thanos' father. Thanos grew up on the planet of Titan, which is one of the moons in our, in our uh, solar system here. He was a problem child. He had some physical defects and, and what have you that he became associated with the Deviants, which is another line that the Celestials created. But we'll touch on that in a moment. One day, Kronos was in his lab. He was performing experiments, as, as anybody would do in a lab. And he bombarded the Eternals on Titan with cosmic radiation. That was the experiment. What happened there, it was an accident that came from it. But that gave them their long lives and their invulnerabilities to pretty much anything. But when those atoms were smashed, Kronos lost his physical being. He just became an astral embodiment of his former self. So that's how you have Thanos as an energy manipulator, as invulnerable, as nearly immortal. And actually he is, I'll get to that uh, further along here in a sec. It was later revealed in this recent volume that Thanos was supposed to be named Dione by his mother, Suisan. When she looked at him and saw his mutation, she instantly went insane and knew at that point that she needed to call him Thanos. So that was his name. But because she went insane, she was like, this child is just gonna be the death of literally everything. So what she did was she picked up a scalpel or a knife there in the operating room, the delivery room, and she wanted to kill him. All she saw was that death and destruction. Later on, you know, Thanos grew up. He was like typical kid for a while, just wanting to be accepted. He was really teased on because of his look. He once went hiking with uh, some of his friends. They became trapped in a cave and the lizards uh, ate the kids. All that was left was the bones when they found him. What he did, he was in there with them. He was trapped. He was the only one to escape. But he overcame his fear of killing them by killing anything by slaughtering the lizards that were in there. And once he did that, he became obsessed with the idea of death. He became obsessed with the idea of just killing and just being this power over other people. But he was still young and he confused that desire for knowledge. And then years later, he was continuing. He killed multiple people. He would bring in, you know, the students that he had, people he knew, and they would just disappear. It was later revealed, Mentor, his father, learned that it was Thanos himself that killed his own mother just like cut her up himself and and the eternals we say that it was him that created the concept of murder he was creating the weapons titan was a really peaceful place so what happened was he had this girl that was following all through became a young adult into you know when he became a young adult when he was a child and he didn't know who she was but she was always like kill 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 encouraging him and pushing him along to do this it turns out that that was death it was like his destiny ever since that moment his mother saw him ever since he was born with 
that death and destruction in his eyes, that he was destined to be what he would become. And death knew that and courted him all the way through this. So his mother died. He fled. He went to the outer rims of the galaxy, just became a pirate. He went around with these people who just killed and maimed countless planets. They were what Jim Starlin called it, a horde of interstellar malcontents. He became the leader. Uh, he went back to the planet at the behest of this girl who he didn't know at the time was death and uh, took over, killed everything. He was just infatuated uh, with her, obsessed with it. He sought out at one point uh, the Cosmic Cube. He wanted to make himself a god, but he failed at that. And when he failed, he was upset. He actually thought death was gonna reject him because of his failure. So that's when he decided to go seek out what were the soul gems. When he sought out the soul gems, he met another character named Adam Warlock, who was a very important character in the cosmic side of the Marvel Universe. He also learned of uh, another character named Magus. Eventually, he was able to collect all the gems and they're really powerful. They all they can manipulate time and energy and reality, and the soul. He actually, at one point, he was killed by Captain Marvel, but it was Spider-Man with some help who was able to bring him back to life. And when he brought Warlock back to life, Warlock was like powered up with all of his cosmic power again. And he was able to defeat Thanos. And instead of killing him, he turned him into stone. He encased him in stone. He didn't kill him because he wanted to deny him what he really wanted, which was to ultimately be with death but unbeknownst to warlock death did visit him she gave him more power and he went out with that power to find the infinity gems and take those gems and put them all into the infinity gauntlet and became the ultimate seer of death and destruction in the entire galaxy with this resurrected Thanos, Silver Surfer, and everybody was trying to find him. What he wanted to do was restore the balance of life and death in the universe. He said there was too much life and eventually would grow to be overpopulated and it would just kill itself. So what he wanted to do was kill off 50% of the entire universe's population. Silver Surfer was like, oh, so you want to write the universe's environmental problem. Kind of summarizing what that was with the life and death balance. It's a pretty delicate balance and it was a pretty horrific solution to it. He once fought with the Silver Surfer right around this time, but Death actually was wanting Silver Surfer to be a herald for Death and got mad. So it just brought him back to life in a fit of rage. It was a jealous fit of rage instead of sending him off to Death. So Death was really, really mad. So what Death did was make Thanos immortal. And that effectively would deny him from ever entering the realm that death was a ruling over. So he could never be with her. So now he's got this energy manipulation. He's got basically impervious body. Now he's going to live forever. He is just like the ultimate power, especially when he had the infinity gauntlet and the, the infinity gems all together. He was a god. Thanos later on, he began a quest. He was actually, because he had killed pretty much everybody, all of his family. He had a fairly large sized family as he was going around killing all those people. People with the pirates he was betting all of these people on these different planets and, and he had children but he actually went back and killed most of them he did learn that he had a son named Thane it was a son that he bore with an unnamed inhuman so he went around to all the different planets with a quest to just take over but with a secret quest to actually find his son but what he did was he had what are called in the movie the children of Thanos but what are called in the books the Black Order and that's Proxima Midnight Ebony Ma Black Dwarf and Corvus Glaive so they would help him make people bend the knee when he was at different planets and that brings us to the latest you know evolution of him in the 2017 volume and you get to learn of his name you get to see a future thanos it's a pretty good read if you haven't read it i will recommend a couple of volumes to you definitely read the origin if you can even if it's in digital form for iron man 55 but you do want to read there's a 2003 and a 2017 volume for thanos also read thanos imperative thanos rising the thanos quest which is a really fantastic two parter you want to read the infinity war and the infinity gauntlet which led to the infinity crusade and warlock in the infinity watch also read infinity which is another mini series you'll have the infinity relativity and the revelation uh, there's also called thanos a god up there is listening that you want to read and jim starlin was going to be continuing to create stories uh, ogns for the character but he had a falling out with marvel publishing not to be confused with marvel the marvel side that does the movies he still has a good relationship with them he wanted to write the current volume he was writing a story that was very similar and he was going to be writing a series 
of them. So his last book that you'll be able to find, and it comes out in April of 2018, original graphic novel in a hardcover format, I believe, be Jim Starlin and Alan Davis. It's called Thanos, the Infinity Siblings. So after that, you'll have, you know, Donny Cates or whoever is writing, continuing on with the myth and the legend and the lore of Thanos. But the creator, Jim Starlin, after this, Infinity Siblings will be done. And of course, you do need to know that uh, there are a couple of people who have played Thanos in the movies. It was not just the one that we know, Josh Brolin. The first one was Damien Potier in 2012's Avengers. And he has been animated, live action, you name it. Thanos is one to watch and his star is continually on the rise as he gains power, loses it, and what have you. So that's Thanos, guys. Let me know what you thought down below. If I missed something, uh, definitely let people know down below because I want this to be helpful and useful for them and interesting. So if there's a gap or a hole or something that you think that people should know, please let me know down below and let them know. And if this is your first time here, if you like videos like this, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. That'll tell me I should keep doing more like this and of course you know please subscribe too with a little notification bell right next to it that'll let you know every time i upload a brand new video whether it's this whether it's the live podcast on thursday nights a haul video whatever it is i want you to be the first to know i'm jesse this is jls comics and this has been a history and origin video for Thanos. Oh, and before you go, let's talk about that merger really quick. It was in the mid 1990s that Marvel and DC got together to form an imprint called Amalgam Comics. Uh, they would combine characters from the two different universes, like uh, Dark Claw was Batman and Wolverine, for example, one of which was a merger between Thanos and Darkseid, who became Thanos Side. He first appeared on Bullets and Bracelets number one, which saw. Uh, Princess Diana, Wonder Woman, pairing up with the Punisher uh, to go to Apocalypse and meet him. Um, but that is where you'll find the merger. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know down below, comments, all that good stuff. Uh, thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, please hit that subscribe button and uh, join the JLS Comics family. We'd love to have you. Let me know if you like this type of video, and I'll make plenty more of them. See you guys soon.